brain and and Sue and Dee. So I'm, I'm just hoping I could do the same for her. And just to follow up, what was it like when you got that phone call saying that you're a part of this squad in 2021? Ms. Carol Callen can tell you I'm probably maybe the only one that cries every time. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't take it for granted. You know, I just start bawling crying just because it's it, it means a lot for me. It means a lot for my family and coaches and players along the way that has allowed me to be at this position in my career. So, you know, the fact I have an opportunity for in pursuit of the third gold medal, it's it's surreal. It's it's just a it's just a blessing, and to be a veteran now on this team, it's just um, just everything just coming full circle. So, I look forward to the months ahead. Thanks, Tina. Yeah. We'll go next to Christy Winter Scott with NBC Sports Washington. Hey, Tina! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. When you said that you were uh, picking the brains of the players who had been on the Olympic team, you know, when you first got on your, your first of three now Olympic teams, what kinds of questions are you anticipating coming from Ariel Atkins in that regard? I mean, she has Tina Thompson as a mentor and now Dawn Staley, obviously, as the coach, but a lot of players that she can use as a touchstone. What were your questions and what are you anticipating from Ariel in that way? Um, my, my questions, it wasn't more so basketball questions just because, you know, I had just literally came out of UConn and Coach Oriyama was the head coach. So it was a lot of the, the same, um, the same plays. I knew he was going to demand the same thing he did out of me for those four years. Uh, but it was just more so just knowing you, you check who you are for your WNBA team at the door, and then you're taking on a whole new role at, at USA. Um, less is always more, I would like to say, from what I've learned being on this team. You know, my job going out there is just to set hard screens, roll, pop, take the open shot, run down the floor hard, just dragging the defense. Um, so it's just little things like that, rebound. You know, it, it's just really just doing what it what needs to be done for that possession. It's not thinking how to score. It's, it's, it's none of that. It's just um, more so less of you is, is more. So I think that would probably be, the best set of advice that I would give Ariel. And that's what I, I learned just, from them, and that's what I learned from those guys. Awesome. And just hearing what Dawn was saying about having uh, a great collection of players like yourself, this is your third time through, and then a lot of younger players, but then Sue and Diana too, you know, who are going for their fifth medal. What is the dynamic that you're anticipating with players who have been through it that many times and plus a handful of, of younger players who this will be their first Olympic games. Um, I think, I think for the, for the most, so I want to say there's six players that, that have, you know, been a part of the, the Olympics at sorority. Um, I think just more so for us, we know what to expect. Um, we know what to demand from the, from the younger players. We know that we have to set the tone and set the example in practices and how we carry ourselves out outside um, when we're walking around and interacting with with fans and media. Um, and then for the young guys, I just expect them to be hungry for their eyes to be wide open, you know, just wanting to do whatever whatever they can. Um, I've had the experience of playing with a couple or a handful of them, you know, on the FIBA circuit. And I don't think they're going to be out of step. I think all of those new guys with the new wave uh, for the USA players, I, I think they're going to be more than fine. Just allow them to do what they've been doing for their WNBA teams. Thank you, Tina. Next up, we've got Sarah Val Valenzuela with the New York Daily News. Hey, Tina, congratulations. Thank you. Um, so everyone back here knows you, knows Tina Charles as New York basketball, no matter wherever you go. And you've said before that you have an immense amount of pride um, just for your city and knowing that you get to be one of the greats playing the game. Does that sense of pride take on any kind of a different I don't know, face or any kind of a different feeling when you go overseas now playing in your third Olympic games? Um, no, it, it pretty much stays with me. You know, that, that competitiveness that I have, that um, no quit, no give up, um, that grit that I have, you know, that's, that's all the morals that I've learned just being a New Yorker coming up. You know, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And, and so I, I take that confidence with me. And I think that's what sets me apart from, most of my counterparts. I think um, for me, the season that I'm having, in w, it's not a surprise to me just because it's, it's, it's in my DNA. You know, you just have to keep moving and keep having your head up and um, just keep holding yourself accountable. Um, it, it's something that I do. I just have a standard for myself and 
most New Yorkers that I know, they they have that standard. So um, New York is always in. Thank you. And next is David Aldridge. Hey, Tina, congratulations. Um, it, it's, you're in your third cycle, um, you know, Sue and, and Diana are in their fourth and fifth cycles. And so many players over the last few years have done multiple cycles. And I just wonder what keeps people coming back time after time, you know, to, to continue to represent your country. I know it's an honor, but, you know, most people go one, maybe two, and then they're done. And then, but a lot of people see in, in this program seem to keep coming back. Yeah, like you said, I think it starts with what you said. Um, it's, it's, it's just an honor. It's, it's, it's a blessing to be able to represent your country in, in such this way of doing something that you love to do with a passion that you have. And um, just more so not for us, but just for the generations that are, that are coming after us. You know, what that 96 team was able to do for me, um, that, that was the first time I, I, I got to see women playing. And it, my eyes were wide open and I said to myself, I would love to be there. And you realize what they did then is, is what we have now. And, and I think that's what we're trying to do for the next generation. And then I think what keeps us here is just our level of play. You know, there's just the players that you're calling out throughout their cycle is just their level of consistency, um, of, of greatness at, at that. So um, I'm just really thankful again to, to be on this team. Tina, how, do you all, I mean, is, how much has that ever talked about, the standard that has been set through this program over the last now 25 years and the, and the responsibility to continue to hold that standard up? Um, I think that's just a, you know, you, you could say that's players, but I think that's a reflection of like, you know, Caroline Williams. That's a reflection of Carol Callen, of Ed. It's a reflection of just those that you don't see, literally, because they're the ones behind the scenes that's making everything go the certain way so we don't have to worry about anything we're just in tune with what the coaches want out of us so I think it's really kudos to the management team of USA basketball um, that allow us not to think of anything but just basketball and to go out and play um, you know that goes down to, to to Elliot to Ellis like all these guys that you guys don't see or know that I know Caroline knows and probably smiling that means a lot to us that allows us to go out and be consistent in our performance um, it's as simple as that Thanks, Tina. Um, next, we'll go to Heather McDonald from NBC4. Hey, Tina, congratulations again. Um, I know you've talked about what it means to represent the country. And, you know, I don't know, obviously, the roster just came out this morning. So I don't know if it's enough, certainly enough time to reflect on it. But, you know, the way the country is right now, the last year, is there something maybe even different, like this cycle around just knowing that this is an opportunity for people to come together? Maybe that's corny. I don't know. But does that ever enter your mind at all about the opportunity for people to come together and, and root for this team and represent what that means? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, that's that's something that I think about. You know, sports always brings people together, always brings different, I think, backgrounds together. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. And um, again, I'm, I'm very thankful that the Olympics are are going to be on. Um, I know that I totally understood the, the apprehension in, in Tokyo and in Japan. But um, again, I'm, I'm happy that that I'm able to play. I'm happy that I'm able to be a quote unquote distraction for others for what they got going on and how they were impacted this past year, as you mentioned. Um, so yeah, so hopefully uh, it'll be a great performance. Congrats again. Thank you. And Michelle Vogel. Yeah, Tina, congrats to you. I, I wondered, you know, coming, dealing with the asthma last year and not being able to play in WNBA, but before the Olympics were canceled, like, did, did you have a thought like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm going to miss this chance. And, you know, you talked about how emotional you, you were and how grateful you were because you don't take it for granted. But it, in some ways, you know, did the moving back a year end up being the best thing for you, if you will, because of, of you might not have been able to play last year from a physical standpoint? Um, no, last year physically, I would have been ready um, to, to play if, if the opportunity did present itself. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, it was just taking precautions just due to COVID is why I didn't play in the bubble and just getting medically exempt with just what my medical history was. But um, when there was the notion that it, that Tokyo may not have happened, you know, again, I said to myself, I'm just thankful that I was able to do, you know, 2012 and 2016. I was more so thinking of those who would have been first years, as you see reflected on this team, and maybe if they would not have had the opportunity now. Um, so that was more so on my mind, but regardless, again, I'm, I'm thankful to be on the team. I'm thankful the opportunity came around again. And 
USA basketball just trusts me to, to represent them well out there on the court. Thank you, appreciate it. Next up, Cedric Golden. Hey, Tina. Um, I, I know the, the girls in that league are mostly from working class families and um, interested to know your thoughts on the name, image and likeness being passed for NCAA athletes. Um, what, what do you think uh, you could have done with some extra bread in your pocket uh, during those dog days of college at UConn? Um, I don't really know. I think right now, which is what this forum is for right now, specifically, I don't, my mind hasn't gone on that. Um, I'm very thankful for the years that I had at UConn and, and what I made work with what I had. I think that's the most that, that I can say right now. Thank you. Uh, Tyler Byram from NBCS Washington. Hi, Tina. Congratulations again on making the roster. I, I want to ask because it, Heather and Michelle both talked about it, but it's still a pandemic and other countries aren't as doing well as the United States is on the vaccine rollout. Was there any hesitancy on joining the team and participating in this year's Olympics? And kind of what was your thought process on that? Um, USA basketball always does a great job in making sure that, you know, our health and safety comes first, just with the security that we normally have, um, and just how, you know, specific and intentional Miss Carol Callen is just being the head of this whole snake. Um, so I, I wouldn't have any, any worries being under USA basketball coming in, um, with the situation that we have with COVID and, and, and what you're saying. And then when think of representing your country, you know, you can, go pretty far of others that are in who are representing our country and where we are now and the freedom that we have that was under much more distress than than you know than, than what I'm speaking to right now so I pre feel pretty fun and then with you and Ariel both going over and playing what do you think that will do for the bond between you two as teammates and then carrying it forward throughout the WNBA season um, I think it's going to be great. You know, I think we're onto something really special, her and I, with what we're able to do for this team with the handful of players on the Mystics that we that we don't have right now. Um, it's always going to it's only going to make us closer. It's always going to make a bond closer. Me getting to know her even better just because, again, we don't have a guest program. So she's someone that I know I'll be very close to to just be alongside of her, get to know her even better off the court. Thank you. Next, uh, next up, we've got Adam Betts with the Journal on Fire. Hey, Tina, congratulations on the uh, being named to the team. You mentioned in your first answer about players like Swin, Diana, Sue. Is it kind of cool that it's almost like a UConn reunion each Olympics, right, with all you guys there? Is that kind of cool in a way? Yeah. Um, again, it just says a lot about Coach Oriyama, you know, the players he's able to to produce and, and the level of play that we still have, that there's still a good amount of us that's reflected on this team. There's still a good amount of us that are doing great work in the community and just great overall individuals. So uh, it's always great to, to see, um, you know, your UConn sisters, if, if you may. And, and I'm thankful to be on this team with Dean and Sue. You know, we know their time is coming and we don't know when that is. So I always take it in when I'm able to take the court with them, able to hang out with them. Um, it's just a blessing in itself. Thank you. We've got uh, time for a couple more. We've got Laura Saravia from the um, from NBC Today Show. Hi, Tina. Congratulations. I wanted to ask you: these uh, Olympics for you will be very different, and for a lot of other people that have done Olympics before. Can you reflect on what we know now? The the level of public uh, that will be allowed, the spectators that will be allowed into the venues. Can you reflect on how it has the potential to affect and how you feel about it? Thank you. Um, on not having uh, spectators, correct? Not having so, spectators, all the new, uh, all the testing, the testing regime that will be uh, quite strict, testing every day, the level yeah. of, for example, we saw the Olympic Village and we saw sort of, a, you know, a lot of social distancing uh, in place. How do you feel about all of that? How do you think it has any potential to, to affect you or the team or other athletes? Um, I think since March, 2020, we've, <laughs> we've been adjusting to what our new norm is. So uh, for me, it's just gonna be like playing in the WNBA, having to get up and having to test all the time. You know, I didn't play in the bubble last year, but um, there's many players that's on this Olympic team that did play in the bubble and, you know, had to get used to not having uh, spectators or having fans or, 
you know, being able to have all your loved ones with you all the time. So it's just more so us, again, more time to get to know each other, spend more time together um, and just build that bond as we're as we're en route for gold. So for me personally, I, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, it's just something we've had to get used to since since March of, of last year. Thank you. We've got time for two more questions. We're gonna go with Grady Diaz from FIBA and then Scott Abraham, you're on deck. Hi Tina, congratulations. Um, can you just talk a little bit about the importance of having Dawn Staley as your coach? You know, she's a black woman head coach um, for USA. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely the turn of the tide, you know, uh, and, I'm, and I'm really thankful and grateful that it is Dawn just because of how outspoken she is um, about that topic of the need to see more representation um, in, in these positions. And, you know, the fact that Dawn is the first one, it's full circle when you speak of that 96 team and just all that she's been able to do and the reason why I have the opportunity that I do now, um, I'm very happy for her and, and God willing we can get it done for her to just make more history. Thank you, Tina. And our final question will come from Scott Abraham with ABC7. Hey, Tina, congratulations on another Olympic team. I think this team, Team USA, has won the gold medal for six straight Olympics. Uh, it, it'd actually be probably more of a surprise if the team does not win gold in Tokyo. H how do you handle that type of pressure in terms of, you know, you're getting everybody's best shot because Team USA has been known as the dominant team for years and years? Um, you know, there's a lot of great quotes that I remember from Coach Ariema, and I think my favorite one is when he told me his pressure is when someone asks you to do something you're not capable of doing. Um, I don't see, I don't think myself or my other, you know, teammates on this team believe that this is pressure. You know, I don't think we're thinking about, oh, number seven. It's it's more so uh, just taking it one day at a time and and we'll get there. Uh, but but it's definitely not not pressure. It's not something that we that we can't do that we're not capable of doing. Um, it's just more so going out there and representing ourselves well with our play, having respect for every team that we come across, um, knowing that they're in route of, of their first or their second. So it's, it's really important for us. Thank you, Tina. Thanks, Tina. And thank, thank you, everyone, for being on with us today. If you want